account for its wild success in the UK, but its flat failure here on Broadway. We're bringing in uh, Michael Billington. He's a drama critic at The Guardian. He summarized it, uh, the, the cause of this uh, downfall of sorts as such. He says, if Enron's melancholy saga proves anything, it's Broadway's irrelevance to serious theater. Hmm. For more, we're joined by Michael himself, drama critic at The Guardian in London. Um, Michael, this was a, a big hit in London, fell flat in just three weeks here in the U.S. Is there something that Americans just don't get? Is that what you were suggesting there? Well, what I'm trying to say is there is a cultural divide between London and New York, and things that work in London don't work on Broadway necessarily. Uh, and what happens, I think, on Broadway is that Americans like naturalistic, realistic, drama about families and all the great American plays by Arthur Miller and Tennessee Williams, Eugene O'Neill fall into that pattern. Enron was something else. Enron was a kind of wild expressionist satire and I think not the kind of thing that you would expect on Broadway and I would have thought its natural home was somewhere like the public theatre in New York and I think it was a mistake actually for the London producers to put it straight onto Broadway. So I'm not saying American audiences are in any way inferior to London audiences. I'm just saying we have different tastes. That's all. Well, uh, thank you for, for the clarification because there were some who took umbrage at that, um, uh, saying that perhaps you were suggesting that uh, UK tastes were, were more refined than Americans. But, but there is another part to this, which is to say that uh, Enron and the uh, debacle that ensued with the downfall of that company perhaps hit a little too close to home for some Americans. Do you think that there's just not a sense of humor quite yet about financial crisis, given what we're going through now? I don't know whether there's a sense of humor. I think one problem was that obviously Enron happened um, early 2000. Uh, since then, uh, Americans have experienced the collapse of Lehman Brothers, there's been the Bernie Madoff scandal, and obviously there's the Goldman Sachs dispute going on right now. And I've got a sense that Enron might have seemed uh, in a sense, something almost uh, from the past, old news, as it were. So I think the timing wasn't right. But I come back to the point that I think we just have different tastes mm -hmm. in humour. I can prove this. I remember Neil Simon, who's one of the, you know, the great American playwrights, told me that when his plays were in London, he never earned as much in royalties as he paid in hotel bills. <laughs> so what because, do you think you know, this, uh, what do you we think simply this have means a different... for... Um, I'm sorry, finish your sentence. No, no I just, what I'm saying is I think we have different tastes in humour. And the point about Enron was it was a sort of wild expressionist piece, mm -hmm. not the kind of conventional uh, sort of family background drama that New York audiences certainly like. All right, we've got to leave it there, but I want to quickly ask you, do you think Oliver Stone has a shot at success with this Wall Street 2 on both sides of the pond? Sorry, I didn't hear your question. Oliver Stone's Wall Street 2, is that going to fall flat or is that going to have success? Well, I've just been reading a review of it at the Cannes Film Festival. It sounds to me like it's going to be a success because we all understand, wherever we come from, the nature of greed. All right. Well, we will see what happens. Thank you so much, Michael, for making time.